First, you actually need to know the ICT killzones to then understand all CLS time windows and why ICT did choose the killzones he teaches nowadays. I also share some buy and sell day templates so you can get a better overview. You can download the template PDF below this video. The five most important ICT kill zones are London Open. This one is from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. EST time zone. London Open can create the high or low of the day. The sweet spot is 3 a.m. London Lunch. This one is from 5 a.m. 7 a.m. It normally consolidates or retraces, but reversal or continuation can happen. New York Open Kill Zone. 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. It normally provides continuation or reversal. The sweet spot is 9 a.m. London Close Kill Zone. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is for profit-taking purposes, and it also can create the high or low of the day. Asian Range. That one is from 8 p.m. 12 a.m. In this kill zone currencies like New Zealand Dollar. Australian dollar and JPY are more volatile. There is also a CBDR range and a flout range. CBDR is from 4 p.m. EST to 8 p.m. EST. Flout is CBDR and Asian combined. So, from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., 8 hours in duration. You also should know the daily bias, how to determine it. Knowing the draw on liquidity and also bullish and bearish institutional order flow and clean highs and lows. These topics are easily find on the ICT YouTube channel. Quick explanation about order flow. The market moves from buy stops to sell stops and sell stops to buy stops. Moves from fair value to discount, discount to premium and premium to fair value. In a bullish scenario, down close candles support price and up close candles are being broken. In a bearish scenario, up close candles resist price and down close candles are being broken. Now it gets interesting. First I explain a typical settlement day in the CLS system. After that I will tell you the actual details about the time windows, also when and why we can use them for certain cases. Every day, payment instructions in CLS must meet stringent requirements in term of payment deadlines to ensure that settlement members receive the funds due to them on the effective settlement date, while at the same time minimizing pressure on settlement members' liquidity. Settlement members can submit their instructions to CLS until the day prior to the transaction date at midnight. CLS calculates each settlement member's multilateral net position based on all the foreign exchange payment instructions submitted on the value date. For currencies showing a negative multilateral net position, the settlement member is required to make payments or pay-ins. CLS produces an initial pay-in schedule that can be modified by members bilaterally until 6.30 a.m. on the settlement date. Between midnight and 6.30 a.m., Settlement members can bilaterally submit additional instructions or cancel instructions submitted previously. These transactions essentially serve to reduce the amounts of pays-ins featuring in the initial payment schedule via in-out swaps. CLS disseminates the final pay-in schedule to settlement members at 6.30 a.m., stating the minimum amount that settlement members must pay in each currency at a stated time, so that all payment instructions can be settled before 9 a.m. The system starts to call for funds at 7 a.m. This process ends at 12 p.m. Settlement members begin to settle their debit positions via pay-ins and, as soon as there is sufficient liquidity and the risk tests have been successfully completed, CLS settles the credit positions via payouts. There is no set schedule for payouts, but in general, the Asia-Pacific region's currencies are given priority, as the RTGS systems for these currencies close first as are the largest balances. The settlement system's daily operating hours cover the operating hours of the RTGS systems of central banks whose currencies are processed so that CLS can settle pay-ins and payouts on its accounts with central banks. These times are in CET, not EST. You will know the importance later in this video. The role of the U.S. Federal Reserve in the supervision of CLS. CLS Bank International, based in New York is a U.S. banking entity to which the Status of Edge Act Corporation was granted in 1999, limiting its business scope. It is qualified as a single-purpose bank. The bank's sole purpose is to settle foreign exchange transactions. Its operations are regulated by the Federal Reserve Board, FRB, with support from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, FRBNY which is responsible for the prudential oversight of CLS Bank, as well as providing secretariat services and coordinating the work of the Oversight Committee in charge of the cooperative supervision of the CLS system. Given its international scale and role in handling many currencies, the CLS system is subject to cooperative oversight governed by an agreement between a number of central banks, including those of the G10 countries together with other central banks whose currencies are processed by CLS. The Federal Reserve, as the lead overseer, 
coordinates this oversight. The purpose of the cooperation arrangement is to enable the central banks involved to participate in the system's oversight so as to ensure its safety and efficiency. Under this arrangement, the central banks ensure that CLS complies with standards applicable to payment systems and market infrastructures, as well as examining changes proposed by the operator to assess their potential impact on the system's rules, operating conditions, and, in particular, its risk profile. The Oversight Committee, under the aegis of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, which includes the signatory central banks, oversees this cooperation. In this graph you can see the initial pay-in schedule, which goes from midnight CET to 6.30 a.m. CET. In ESD it is 6 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. This is actually the real Asian kill zone. ICT teaches 8 p.m. to midnight ESD. We now use 6 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. ESD. In the next graph, shown here, you can see the operational timeline from CLS and CET time zone. This whole thing is for CBDR, Asian range and flout concept. Also London Open is coming from this graph. However, after 1 p.m. CET, so 7 a.m. EST, New York Open kill zone. America takes over and does its own thing. But let's first stick to this one here. As you can see, I have added the EST time zone with purple text. After 12 p.m. CET we then go into the London Open lunch. The actual London Open session goes from 1 a.m. EST to 6 a.m. EST. In CET it's 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Then we have one hour lunch time from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. EST, or from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. CET. In this graph, however, you see the normal ICT Asian range, but I will show you why we use 6 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. EST. It actually makes more sense because the same day settlement goes until 6.30 a.m. CET, shown in the previous graph. We now can determine the real Asian range. In the next video I will show you how to use it for bias. Also in this course, I will teach you the importance of DTCC and all the rules I have for these time windows. It will be fun. Enjoy.